All right, nerve-wracking thing. I hate this. So you've got the age old problem of you gotta transport your motorcycle to, well, anywhere, and you can't ride it there and you don't own a truck. What do you do? Don't worry, in this video, I'm gonna solve that problem for you guys. Stick around. What's going on guys, Chase here, and behind me I have our giveaway bike build, our 2018 Yamaha R6, and I need to take it to the shop and I can't ride it there. So I figured this would be the perfect circumstance for me to show you guys, as someone who does not own a truck, how I transport a motorcycle to wherever I need to transport it to. Now yes, I did say giveaway bike build. If you guys wanna learn how you guys can win this motorcycle once we get finished building it, look in the description for WBR Garage, find the link Link, click there it'll tell you everything you need to know but first I need a truck now most of us know a buddy with a truck for me that buddy is Patty Rick with his 2022 Toyota Tundra SR5 if that truck looks familiar it's because we did a review on it over on our on four wheels channel the car review channel if you guys want to check it out we'll put a link in the description now you don't have to have a buddy with a truck you could always go to your local U-Haul place and rent a truck from them but Instead of renting a truck from U-Haul and giving them my money, I would rather distract Patty with pizza and beer, and that way I can distract him while I use his truck. Truck acquired. Also pizza and beer acquired. Worth it. Step two. All right, so guys, if you're gonna load a motorcycle into a truck, especially by yourself, there's a couple absolute necessities that you're gonna need to have. One is these ratchet straps. You don't have to have those specific kind. These are kind of the cheap ones you can get on Amazon. You can get eight for like 37 bucks. Or I found these uh, super fun ratchet straps that Rhino makes. You don't have to have these. They cost like 70 bucks for four of them, so they're way more expensive than the little orange ones, but check it out. Right? And then, you can ratchet it, but it all like stays inside of the little housing. These are super cool. I didn't know they existed and now I have them and I love them. Not necessary if you're trying to do this on a budget. The other thing that is kind of expensive for this process is the ramp. Now you can order this for like a hundred bucks on Amazon or you can go to Cycle Gear. We grabbed one yesterday for about 110 bucks. I would recommend if you're not gonna do this a lot, just grab a buddy's ramp or you know try to find somebody with a ramp. Unless you're gonna do it that often, hundred bucks is kind of expensive. That's the bare minimum. You need a ramp, you need three straps of some kind. Now the last thing you're gonna need for the bare minimum setup is going to be a way to get onto the bed a way for you to step up to the bed while pulling the motorcycle up we're gonna show you the way we're gonna do it but you could use a Home Depot bucket just something to step up onto if you're gonna do it like us here's what we're gonna use we have a wheel chalk that we're gonna use in the front of the truck to roll the bike into we obviously have our ramp but we also have a second ramp that I'm going to walk up so one ramp the bikes gonna go up the other ramp I'm gonna walk up on top of that we have Canyon Dancers. These go around the motorcycle handlebars and they will help us strap it down. You don't have to have them, but they make it super simple. I'm also going to be using the Rhino straps because they're just really simple to use and a lot easier to handle all the extra cabling than the cheap guys. Don't worry, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you guys this exact setup. I'm going to show it to you the minimal way to set it up because you can do it without a wheel chalk but I'm also gonna show you guys how we would set it up since we're gonna be transporting the motorcycle. That's everything you need. If you don't wanna get Canyon Dancers, you can also get Soft Ties. Before I got Canyon Dancers, I had Soft Ties. They're super cheap and they work really well. If you guys want links for them, they'll be in the description, but let's get this bike in the truck. All right, guys, uh, so step one for us with the wheel chalk is that we got to get this thing secured into the truck. All I'm gonna do is use this ratchet strap and go across the back of the truck and hold the uh, wheel chalk at the front, I think. That's front, yeah, sure. Now, if I was a super fancy boy, I'd have one of those really expensive ones that like goes all the way to the edges but we're on a budget too. So, all right, 
chocks installed. Now we've got to get the ramp installed. All right guys, so the next step is to secure our ramp. But before we get to securing the ramp, just a word of wisdom from somebody who's done this a few times. As you guys can see, we're on flat ground right now, and I want you to pay attention to the angle of this ramp. It is pretty steep. This is going to be one of the hardest ways to load a motorcycle into a truck. But if you do things smartly, it becomes incredibly easy. You do not not listen to this. It, will, it is the one single thing that will make this job easier than anything else. If you can, do not load a motorcycle into a truck with a ramp on flat ground. We have geography to help us in ways that will make our lives very simple. So I'm gonna show you guys how I would load this bike into the truck using things around us to the different spot. But keep in mind the angling. All right guys, so we literally just came over to a part of this parking lot that has like a little dip in it. As you guys can see, look at the angle of the ramp now. So instead of like a really harsh angle, we've leveled that angle out considerably. This is gonna make this job so much simpler. A note, thanks to Patty Rick, when you do this, these ramps are made at this angle to be at that original angle where everything is flat. So even strapping these down, there is a slight risk of this popping up and over. Just be careful, make sure everything's set before you roll the bike in here. You don't wanna be finding that out with a 400 pound motorcycle on a thin little ramp. So we're gonna get both our ramp for the bike and the ramp for me installed and show you guys something very crucial because you don't just place them on here. So let's get the ramps installed. Let's go find the other ramp. All right, so guys, we got our two ramps. One of them is installed and the other one is not. And I'm gonna show you the very important part about installing these ramps because right now, this one's not going anywhere, right? You guys can literally hear that. This one, I don't want that to happen as I'm walking up holding my motorcycle, especially if you're by yourself. So we're gonna loop the ratchet strap around the ramp and then we're gonna secure that to the trailer hitch on the truck and take this from moving around to not moving. So on the ratchet strap, we are going to loop this through the foot and then there's a little hole on this end loop it around there. Now we have a soft part holding that ramp to the truck. And that way I see a lot of videos where people are attaching the ramps with this end and it goes over the foot. But when you do that, if your motorcycle wheel is going up the ramp and it hits this, it could shimmy it a little bit, which isn't really a big deal. But if you're in a worst case scenario and you don't have the bike really managed well, and it slips a little bit, that could introduce an opportunity for you to lose control of the motorcycle. Motorcycle falls off the ramp. Nobody's having a good time. So it's my recommendation that you just loop it through and that way it's the soft end uh, around the ramp. It's kind of like that. I'll show you over on the ramp. Now look at that. Totally smooth as I walk up totally smooth here as the tire of the motorcycle goes up. All right, so now all we gotta do is uh, attach the other end to the trailer hitch. Now they're not going anywhere. Now the really fun part, loading the bike up. All right guys, so before we roll the bike straight into the wheel chalk, just something to keep in mind, when you set your ramp up, if you're using a wheel chalk, make sure the motorcycle ramp is shooting straight at that wheel chalk. If you can tell, if I go straight up this, I go straight into that wheel chalk. That is something very important when it comes to these ramps. Now the fun part, also now the super nerve wracking part. Let's get the bike in the truck. All right guys, public service announcement before I roll this bike into here. Do not, in this setup, ride the bike onto the truck. This is a very small area. If you mess up, your margin for error is literally that long. And if you mess up and you go to one side, there's not, you're not in a I can save it situation. Some of you have might have seen this clip. Test, test, the, rear test the rear brake. Is the rear brake good? 
Okay. Feel good about this. Thomas All right, here we go. Way up here. Okay. We'll get ready. Chase, if you fall off of the bike while you're at the top of the ramp. Yes. No brakes. Yes. Do. That worked out so well. That'll do, Donkey. That'll do. Hop on. Ugh, who gets off on the right side? Yeah, right. Chase does. Where are you from, Australia? Yes, I did ride a wrecked motorcycle up a U-Haul trailer, but my margin for error was a little bigger and it was a wrecked motorcycle already. So probably shouldn't have done that regardless. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn the bike on. I'm gonna use the clutch to help power the motorcycle because I'm, I'm by myself here. I don't have anybody pushing the motorcycle. So I'm gonna use the clutch and that's gonna use the bike's power to push the bike up and I'm just gonna walk right next to it on this other ramp. All right, so I'm gonna back up just a little bit. Oh, it cranked up, beautiful. All right, bike is currently in neutral. Kickstand is up. Clutch is in. If I had a clutch that was a little better, it wouldn't be so bad. All right guys, so as you can see, bikes in the wheel chalk, it ain't going anywhere, but it is not gonna stay like that if we're rolling down the road. So, we told you guys, minimal setup is using the straps on the bottom. If you're using the minimal setup, unattach the ramps, and now you've got two ratchet straps to attach the motorcycle down. I'ma grab them fancy rhino straps though, and now I'ma strap it down with Canyon Dancers. All right guys, uh, let's talk about Canyon Dancers real fast. These are what Canyon Dancers are. It's just a little cup with a little strap. All it does, uh, it has this little soft area in the middle so it doesn't scratch the bike. All you have to do, cup, cup, you tighten it, and now you have two soft straps that you can attach to the truck. These are super simple. They only cost like 30 bucks. I do highly recommend picking them up because it makes the whole situation easier. If you don't have these, you're gonna have to get underneath where the uh, lower triple clamp is, and you're gonna have to wrap a tie around that. Obviously on a motorcycle like an R6, we've got a lot of fairings and the fairings ain't cheap. So you don't wanna mess those up. I've had in the past where I strapped these incorrectly and I was like, oh, the strap is just barely touching a fairing. When I got the R6 to where I was taking it, because I used to own an R6, it rubbed all the way into the ABS plastic because of the it doing like this under a load. These are invaluable, fairings are expensive, Canyon Dancers are not. So we're gonna use these and strap to the front of the truck. Also, uh, real quick, shout out to Holly. You know who you are, love you. Just to be clear, Holly was a motorcycle. That's not, anyway, okay. All right, guys, uh, so I get to use my fancy new uh, Rhino strap now. Uh, only thing really to note here, one, do not compress your bike too much. In the past, I didn't even like using ratchet straps too much because these things are mechanical and you can get your forks really compressed and then you blow seals and stuff like that. So just be careful with how much you ratchet it down. Also, you've got two sides. One side is a short side that does not increase in size. The other one will go towards the bike. If you use the short side up here, keep in mind, you're gonna have a hefty little metal weight about right here swinging around as you're driving around. Somebody, that's recording this video might have damaged fairings before because they installed it in the wrong direction. Learn from my mistakes, don't make your own. Also another little note on these uh, rhino straps, they've got a little locking pin, which is really neat. So they won't come undone if, you know, a weird bump happens. So all you gotta do, boop, that's installed. Whoop. My God, that is worth every dollar. Boom. Don't go all the way until you have both sides strapped down. To the, to the. Okay, so most trucks are gonna have this little tie down spot right here. Uh, if it doesn't, it's a truck you probably shouldn't be using. So just keep that in mind. We're gonna get it tight, and then I'll come show you guys the forks and what they're gonna look like as we start tightening her down. All right guys, when you're ratcheting it down, just this is where you wanna keep in mind how much compression you are putting on your forks. 
you guys can probably see the fork just slowly compressing. I'm gonna go to the other side. All right, so guys, this bike's not moving anywhere and I don't feel bad about how much compression I have in the forks. You do wanna have some, cause that's what's gonna hold the bike into the truck. It's just when you strap it all the way down, that's where you kind of run the risks. Get an inch or so of compression in the fork and you should be good. Obviously this bike's not going anywhere. All right guys, uh, now that we got the bike in here, uh, I can lock my wheel chalk. Now, most wheel chalks should have a little lock. Boop. All that does is make this little uh, bottom part not be able to roll backwards. So just make sure it's locked if your wheel chalk has a lock. All right guys, so at this point, this bike is not gonna go anywhere, but we're gonna do a safety strap around the rear wheel and I'll tell you why after I strap it down. We're gonna use the same little hooks on the side of the truck. We're gonna go in here, go to the wheel, wrap around the wheel and go to the other safety hook thing in the truck. All right guys, something important at this part is to make sure that the strap stays flat around the tire. Uh, you don't want it to get twirled up here because that's gonna lose all of your protection. As you can see, this easily gets turned around. So I'm just double checking that it stays flat and hooking into that side. All right, we've got it tight around there. Now we can tighten this guy on. I'm flat everywhere and I can start ratcheting. The reason we do this is not to make the bike not roll back. As you guys can see, this is around the wheel. The wheel can spin. So if something happened in the front, the bike would roll off anyway. This is to make sure that the rear tire does not shift from side to side. If it does that, it could upset the geometry on the bike. And now the front's all wonky and the bike can actually fall over. If you're on the highway and you hit a big bump, this has literally happened to me before, I had a bike strapped in like it is in the front. I hit a really big bump on the highway. That big bump compresses the suspension in the front. The rear tire gets super loose and it went straight to the side of the U-Haul truck that I had rented. It is scary as hell and sketchy. I do not recommend it. And if one strap can solve that problem, I highly recommend you installing the strap. So do the safety strap. It'll, you will thank us when you're going down the road, you hit a big bump and you look in the rear view and your bike hasn't moved. Very important. All right guys, at this point, we've got our two straps in the front. They're tightened down. We got our safety strap in the back. At this point, the bike's in, but before I roll out just from ease of mind, I like to walk around and just like grab parts of the bike and shake it. As you guys can see, the whole truck is shaking. If your vehicle is shaking when you shake the motorcycle, it's probably good, but just do a little walk around. Sometimes when you tighten one strap, another strap will loosen. So just walk around, put a hand on everything, make sure everything feels good. In our situation, it does. And uh, at this point, you can roll out of here. I should probably see if Patty's done with the pizza. And guys, that's about all it takes to get a bike loaded into a truck and get it locked down securely. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments down below and either I or somebody else watching this video that's loaded a bike up can answer them for you. Hope this helps you guys and we'll see you on the next one. If you got to this point in the video, you're in the outro crew. Thank you for getting to the end of the video. Put OC in your comment down below and we will see you guys on the next one. Later.